Hey friends and welcome back to my art studio. So today we're going to be doing another thrift flip. My mother-in-law wants me to revamp her wind chime. So this is what it currently looks like. Some of the string on it is rotted and broken. Um, some of it needs like some sanding and just some fresh paint and restringing. Like this is broken and um, it's got a cute little turtle on it and I just think it has so much potential. So what we're going to do is just revamp this the best way that we can. I'm really excited to see the transformation because I just like see the potential in it, you know? So yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I needed to do was just lay it down and measure how far everything was when it was hanging. So I needed to know how far each individual piece was and then I just took notes and drew a little diagram of it so that later on when I tie it back up I get the dimensions right. And then um, I just cut all of the string off and detached everything because this string was um, already like trying to fall apart. It had already broken in a lot of places. It was just old and it was kind of ratty and it was just time for some new string. And then I took some sandpaper and I sanded each individual piece. Um, I think that it previously had some kind of finish on it. Um, I think that it shone the original wood bamboo stuff. I don't think that it had paint on it, but I think it did have some kind of finish on it. Um, so I just wanted to smooth that out. And some of the wood was um, just rough and it needed some, some smoothing out. And this was all just to prepare for painting. I needed to have a good clean surface for painting. And then I had to vacuum up that mess from <laughs> sanding. Then I just took a rag and wiped it all down, get all the dust off of everything. And this one had a split in it, and so I tried to kind of like fix it. Um, I got some clamps and some glue, and I tried my best to fix that split that was in it. While the glue was drying, I started putting a base coat on all the pieces. Um, I didn't want everything to be white, but I just went ahead and put a base coat of white so that the colors that I was going to use would show up a lot better. These were actually like kind of annoying to paint because I would like sit them down and then they would roll and like white paint was getting everywhere. The transformation of the mat I'm painting on um, from beginning to end is crazy. Like the paint gets all over it. It gets so messy, but that's okay. That's what we do on this channel. We get really messy. <laughs> Painting the little beads are really hard throughout the entire video. It's hard because they're so small and I need to like pick them up and if I don't pick them up then they roll on the mat while I'm trying to paint them and it just, it's a mess. It gets everywhere, it gets all over me, it's just a mess. It's really hard to paint the beads. Alright, so to start out the design I decided that on these um, longer pieces I wanted to ombre from a more burnt orange to a yellow all the way up to the white. I did want to leave a little bit of white at the top. Um, I was thinking the theme for this is kind of like sunset on the beach since it's a sea turtle. So I wanted to really like play off of like the color palette of a sunset on the beach. So that's what I do here and I just ombre it up and I love how these pieces turned out. I think that it's beautiful. I did have a little bit of a hard time ombreing from the yellow to the white. but. Um, like with all paint projects, the more you work with it and the more layers you put, the better it looks. And then I move on to the turtle, which I was super excited to design. Um, I start by kind of like blending in a bunch of different color blues and greens and um, then just painting like the actual turtle kind of like a darker green just so it would stand out from the shell. This turtle is so cute. I love him a lot and he only gets cuter throughout the video. So just buckle your seatbelts. <laughs> So I did a lot of dot work on his shell and on his head and I outlined everything in white and um, I did this off camera because I really wanted to concentrate and make sure that the design was like what I wanted it to be but I did get the last couple dots on camera just to show you guys what I was doing. I also did some dot work on these pieces but I didn't like the background being white. It just it didn't feel right to me so I took that color that I used on the base of the turtle and I just colored it in and then I did some dot work on it as well. And for these I just used every single color that was in the color palette that I was using for the entire wind chime. I used that and just made a pattern in the dot work kind of like a striped pattern but just a little bit more funky, funky than just stripes. 
So how I do dot work is I use the end of my brush, not the brush part, the other side. As you can see right here, I'm using like the opposite side. Um, if you dip this in paint, it usually makes like a perfect circle because the end of brushes are already like rounded. So there's a little hack for you guys. Dot work like this is as soothing to me as like doing black work on other artwork. Um, just doing like these little fine details always like help me concentrate and it really calms me down. I enjoy doing it a lot. I flipped them over and did some more dot work on the other side. I decided to paint the circle of all of it just a light blue. I almost left it white, but nothing else was really white, so I decided to do light blue. Painting the beads, like I said before, was hard. I ended up putting like a brush on the dot to hold it down and painting it and then flipping it over and doing the same thing after they dried. That was the easiest thing I could come up with, but I still got paint all over the mat. <laughs> Um, and then I moved on to these. At first I was going to just leave them yellow, but then everything else had so much detail I didn't think that I could. So I added some dots along um, the side of them, and I'm glad that I did that. I think that it did tie everything together and it looks great. And then I took some Mod Podge and sealed everything because if this is going to go outside, I wanted it to be like weatherproof and all of that. And I wanted to just seal in the paint and the design. I didn't want it to chip. I didn't want anything to happen to it. So the Mod Podge just sealed everything in so that it's like perfect for the outdoors and any other catastrophes that could happen for the paint to chip. I snapped my fingers and it was all tied together. So just a little recap. This was the before. And this is the after. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I really like the color palette that I used. I think that the design turned out really cute with the dot work and all the little designs. Alright, that's going to be it for this video. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I really hope my mother-in-law also likes it. I put so much love and energy into this and I just really like how it turned out. So I hope that she does too. Um, I post videos every single week so make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss a video. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Oh